Hey guys, this is Control Destroy. My name's Nathan, aka the One, and today we're going to be starting off our Onbot Java tutorial series where I'll be going over everything you need to know to get your robot running in Java. In this video, I'll be showing you the basics of all Java programming, including variables, methods, classes, statements, and more, and then we'll get into the actual coding of your first two op modes. So to begin, we're going to go through this test op mode so you can get a gist of what everything means and why it's there. So at the beginning of every op mode, you'll see these statements saying stuff like package and import. This is just importing external code to get other things running. So you'll see the opening of a package by first, and then the importing of individual resources from that package. You won't be messing with this initially, just know not to delete it because it runs everything else. We'll skip over this teleop statement here and go right to the class. So you'll see public class driver controlled extends op mode. What does that mean? Well, everything in Java pertains to a class. And right here, we're creating a new class. A class is just the creation of an object. So here, we're creating a public object, something that can be seen by everything, uh, and it's called driver controlled. And it extends op mode. This is saying that we're creating a new object, the driver controlled op, and it is part of an op mode. That is what type of object it is. Now, we're going to go over variables. And if you've done any work in other programming, variables are just placeholders for other information. So the four basic variables in Java are booleans, doubles, int, stands for integer, and strings. Booleans are variables that are either true or false. So here you can see that we're instantiating and defining a boolean called mode activated and is equal to true. Next, we have doubles. Doubles are variables that hold numbers that include decimals. So for example, 3.14, 0.2, negative 1.0, 0.556. So you can see we're instantiating defining a double called servo position and it is 0.556. Next, integers are variables that are whole numbers. 1, 500, negative 5. They do not include decimals. They only go through the whole numbers positive and negative. So here we're instantiating defining an integer, it's called mode, and it is 2. Next we have strings. Strings contains anything surrounded by quotation marks. So here we're making a string called ready message, and it says ready exclamation mark. For example, you can also do something like one in quotation marks or hello. Just know that they behave as just words. They do not act like numbers with adding and subtraction, and if you made a string called true, they do not act as a true and false identifier. So these are your basic variables and the ways you set them up. Next, we'll be getting into methods. So right here, init parentheses is a method. A method is an object that can be called upon to either do a set of actions or output a value. This one, as marked by the void identifier, does a set of actions and is actually executed when you press the init button on your phone. And what happens when you do that is this telemetry.addData statement is ran. This prints a message to the driver station. Telemetry is a class and the dot separates something that is in that class. So inside the class telemetry, there is a method called add data. And we know it's a method because it's followed by parentheses here. Within the parentheses are parameters. Parameters are just something that the method can take in and then uses to either do a specific set of actions or display a certain kind of message. So here, the parameters of add data, there's a prefix and a message. So this method would actually display status colon ready. This is because status is our prefix, uh, and in between the prefix and message is a colon, and then we want the message to be ready message. Since ready message is ready, it will say status ready. We have similar methods here that we won't get into right now, but they do things like constantly loop after you hit init, perform a set of actions when you hit start, and actually the main method, loop and this happens to loop every single time once you've hit play. Right here is another double variable, double, and it's called right stick. And it's actually equal to the gamepad one's right stick Y. That means up and down on the right stick. So here it shows that you can set a variable to a dynamic value. That means every time this loops, it will be taking the information from the right stick and applying it to the variable right stick. So instead of calling upon this long statement, negative gamepad one dot right stick underscore stick underscore y, you, all you have to do is call upon right stick and you get that value. Right here is just an example of what we'll be doing later of doing something like setting a motor's power. 
So you're under the class robot, we're using motor one, and under the class of motor one, we're using the method set power. And we're setting power to the parameter of right stick. So every time this loops, it will set the power to the right stick's value. By this time, you may have realized that everything has been followed by semicolons. This is because all of these are statements. A statement is just something that is executing an action. So here, we're opening a package, so it ends with a semicolon. Here, we're de declaring a variable, so it ends with a semicolon. Here, we're setting power, so it ends with a semicolon. So anything that is performing an action will eventually end with a semicolon. Here you can see that there is no semicolon in the actual declaration of this method. This is because it's declaring a method and it's saying what it's going to do. In here we have the action that will actually be executed and it ends with a semicolon. And then right here to finish off, just another example of telemetry.addData. Under the class telemetry, we're executing the method addData. Its prefix will be motor1power and it'll say colon and we'll be getting the robot motors get power. You can see that this method right here doesn't have any parameters. That's because methods don't always have to have parameters. This is going to get power. It doesn't need any other information. It will just retrieve the power that motor one has. This may seem very complex now, but as we go through the op modes, you'll understand more of what everything means. This is all you need to know to get started with your Java programming. So I'll leave you guys with that. In the next video, I'll show you guys how to get your first few op modes set up and get your robot running. This has been Control Destroy. I'm Nathan, aka The One, and I'll see you in the next one.